This is Ubiquiti's brand new 5G Max and the beginning of their new 5G lineup, which they took the wraps off of this morning. Also included in the lineup, this is the 5G Max Outdoor, which you'll see has a lot more rugged build. But this video is not about that right now, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna stick in the 5G Max territory. Another very interesting product that they revealed this morning is the UDR 5G Max, which is this crazy, awesome, all-in-one dream router and 5G and storage and can run all of the applications and I just can't wait to get my hands on that because I love cramming lots and lots of stuff, lots and lots of tech into really small packages that you can take with you and use in incredible, versatile, amazing environments wherever you get 5G. And I think that's going to be really helpful for when I'm doing a shoot on the road or something mobile, etc. Note that these are not the UMR, industrial or otherwise. Those are still 4G LTE and I do have those, but those are separate from this. Maybe they'll update those to 5G at some point. Hopefully, we'll see. But right now, we're going to talk about these. So let's get into it. Directly inside the box, you have the 5G Max. I have already taken the wrapping off it because, hey, I get new toys and I like to rip them apart and play with them as soon as I get them. So sorry, I can't resist. On the back of the device here, you have a plastic backing. Looks like you have some vents up at the top and the bottom. And you'll notice directly on the bottom here, you have a PoE in 2.5 gig Ethernet port as well as two SIM slots, a uh, reset right? That's a reset. Yeah, a little reset hole there. And then these are actually docking ports. Uh, they're not actual active ports. They're just, you know, clamp spots. You'll see there's a table stand. It's coming. <laughs> also in the box is for the first time ever, I think a ubiquity branded SIM ejection tool key. Why is this not focusing? There it is. Ubiquity branded SIM ejection tool, which is super nice and handy to have. It's just like the wrench, it's nice and hefty compared to, uh, for example, some of the other SIM ejection tools that you may see in the industry. This one is quite nice. Now, unfortunately, it's still got a stabby thing on the end, so I can't just throw it on my keys and keep it in my pocket. That's a story for a different day, but this will be very nice to definitely have on the rack as well as in the backpack. I'm gonna put that aside because we are going to need that in a moment. Pulling down the little door there, you have mounting template, of course, and here's the stand that I was talking about. So it's a desk stand. It has this nice slant to it, and you'll notice these two little things sticking out here. Those are the little docking ports that I was talking about here. On the bottom, you have a nice rubbery grip as well as room for the cable to go through, and the 5G Max just clicks in just like that. It does not need any kind of a security key in order to remove it. It just clicks in and uh, out, and it is guided in by those feet there. So we're gonna continue on here through the box, and then we'll get into the rest of the device. Next up out of the box here, this is the window mount, and you'll see they have the strips here that you'll recognize from some of the other products, and this just slots right in just like that. Easy peasy, no problem. Continuing in the box is a bunch of extra of those window cling sticky strips, so if you need to replace it or they go bad, you, you can put those on there and reapply yourself. And if you wanted to screw it into the wall, you have a wall mount, screw in wall mount attachment here, which also just clicks in very nicely. Lastly, you have some regulatory reading materials, which uh, are important, and one single little tiny package of screws, and that's pretty much for the box. I do like how on the front here, they have the 5G max performance, has 3.4 gigabit download, support for sub six gigahertz, eSIM compatible, and has dual SIM automatic failover. So let's, uh, I'm not gonna test out dual SIM, because I only got one, but we're gonna play around with all the rest of these. Uh, very simply, we've got the desktop dock, and we have the 5G. I'm going to pop out the, good job. I'm gonna pop out the nano SIM slot one, which is very easy to do. And you've got this nice drawer here. Ooh, interesting. It's a Ubiquity branded dummy SIM. Look at that. Ubiquity branded teeny tiny dummy SIM. And I'm going to replace that with my T-Mobile SIM. And let's hope this works because I've had some issues with activating things on T-Mobile out of the box in the past. So everybody hold your breath, fingers crossed. Now, now I'm going to take my Ubiquiti branded ethernet cable. I'm going to run it up through the bottom and I am going to plug it into, directly into the bottom of the 5G Max, thread that down and then run this 
through here so that, well, bend it down and then run it through here so that it is nice and clean. Now I'm going to take the other end of this cable and plug it into the XG switch that is on my desk because, and this is very interesting and important to note, you don't have to plug it in directly to the rack. You don't have to plug it into any of the ISP ports. You plug it into any of the switches on your network and, as long as it's PoE, it will power up and provide internet all the way back to the rack. And the reason why this is super important is because let's say you have a switch way over by the window that is much better for cellular reception. You can plug this into the switch over by the window and run it all the way back to the rack for your primary connectivity. And look at that. It's already booting up as expected. Okay, here we go. The screen is online. It shows adopt to set up eSIM, ready for adoption. All right, one thing that I forgot to mention before is that this is in fact a touch screen. You can bring up your usual uh, ubiquity interface. So you can see your settings of your SIM card in there. SIM slot one, two, how much data it's been using. Uh, you can go into throughput of the device so that you can see how much data is moving through it, as well as your system internals, just like on the other ubiquity devices. You have your info such as IP address, IMEI information right here on the touch screen, up screen, uptime, hardware revision, and uh, settings. So you can change the color, you can change the brightness, and of course from the screen you can restart, which is pretty cool. All right, so it turns out that T-Mobile changed the rules at some point, and I didn't notice that if you have a SIM card for a phone, you can't just stick that into a data device and expect it to work. Now, I'm pretty sure that's how it used to work. In fact, I'm positive that's how it used to work because I used to do that all the time, where I would just switch it from my phone into a tablet and into a data, you know, hotspot, etc., as long as it had a data planet, which just used that data. Apparently, that's no longer allowed, and that SIM card didn't work in here. So I had to run through T-Mobile, as you can see here, and grab a actual data package device plan SIM card. So, be right back. All right, I am back from T-Mobile, got a new SIM card, got it in the device, plugged it in, tested it, everything works. So let's go through and I'll show that to you now. I'm gonna record my screen because I realized I didn't show that whole process earlier in my attempt to troubleshoot and figure out what the hell was going on. So, got it solved, works well. Running it on the UDR7 for funsies and, um, and it's been fantastic. I was getting 300 meg down on a not even totally, like a half signal, because I'm doing this here in the studio at my desk and I'm surrounded by all kinds of stuff that's blocking a lot of the signal. Okay, I've plugged it in, it's turning on, and let's bring up the screen recording over here. All right, I've got the screen recording here, and this is booting up and turning on. You can see already the reception is showing on there. So, ooh, why is this in light mode? I forgot to turn this into dark mode. I'm sorry for blinding you there. That is solved and taken care of. Okay, you can see over here, uh, WAN3 is showing up T-Mobile USA. It's at minus 96 dBm. Is that, that's not decibels, is it? Decibels relative to one milliwatt. So it is decibels. Okay, I'm not totally crazy. Um, you can see here it's got the T-Mobile USA SIM in there. It's at negative 103 decibels. Now the lower the number is, meaning negative 45 would be a good reception. This is a mediocre reception. And I am actually going to pull the ISP out of the uh, UDR here so that we can see what that looks like when it is running. And you can see it immediately spikes on the T-Mobile SIM card there. So I'm gonna do a speed test just to show you that real quick. And uh, it'll probably be somewhere in the 300 range once it ramps up there. 130, one, yep, come on, go, 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 140, 170. There we go, headed for 200. Still thinking about it. I was getting 350 before when I first tested this out. So as with anything cellular, it is going to, you know, vary. And uh, if I move it a little bit closer to the window in that direction, maybe it'll uh, do better. Your upload isn't wonderful because it's cellular. Cellular in general, upload is not great. Um, that's why you are always going to be better on something like fiber or your cable connection. Uh, that being said, this has been working fantastic once I got the right SIM in there. So if you are having an issue with the SIM you're using, go to T-Mobile, get not the tablet plan, just the data plan. It's 25 gig a month is what I put in here. And and uh, it's working fantastic. So yeah, 217, uh, continuing to, to cook over here. You can see my terminal here, all the testing I've been doing in and out when it cut over, and uh, really only took a second there for it to re-engage, and then it had a long uh, round trip time, and now that's back to around between 25 and 50, 60 milliseconds, which, oh, again, over cellular is not bad. If I go here and I bring up Google, um, that loaded instantly. 
Hopping over into the settings, because I realized I didn't show that off either, is you have SIM1 primary. You can see that that is um, the signal strength and what carrier it's on. You have SIM2 and eSIM activation available here, and you can activate the eSIM here. Then you've got device version, uptime, all the usual stuff that you would expect to see here, as well as your SIM information. And yes, those are my actual information there, so feel free to uh, do with that what you will. You have insights over here, which shows you when it's connected uh, or not, whether it's off online, offline, usual type stuff, as well as system statistics. And then over in the settings, you can rename it. You can have um, the settings for each individual connection. Uh, so activating eSIM information can be seen over there, uh, as well as data limit and APN. APN is the routing information for the data networks for your SIM card. So if you're international, for example, uh, when I've traveled, I've had to put input my own APN information because it did not auto detect on the phone. So if that's the case, that's where you would do it here. And then you can also change your IP information and all the usual locate, restart. Locate is actually pretty cute. It uh, does a little ubiquity blinky blinky logo on there. So I'm going to hit stop locating so it doesn't do that entirely. Um, all in all, really solid device. It adopted and, um, you know, after all of the trials and tests that I did to try and figure out why my other SIM card wasn't working, um, when I put in the right SIM card for it, then poof, it worked no problem. So very excited to see that. This is interesting on the topology. It shows the T-Mobile WAN 3 is active on the Dream Router. Um, that data is coming from the 5G Max, and the 5G Max is plugged directly into the PoE port on the uh, Dream Router. So I can totally see myself taking this on the road, whether putting it in a mobile office or if I'm doing a shoot somewhere. Um, this is putting the two of these together is essentially how you get the new Dream Router 5G Max, which also was announced this morning. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on that and play around with it, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, because I love cramming all the tech into one sleek, awesome device. Um, that being said, putting this up on the window in your office or on a desk, anywhere you have a good reception is going to provide a great connection as a failover for backup or even dare I say it, primary, because some of these locations don't really have great options, but they do have cellular. So there have been many other ways of doing this in the past. This is a nice new one that is deeply integrated in the Unify uh, ecosystem and um, easily adopts onto your network. So, um, so I am definitely a big fan here. Some final details here. The 5G Max costs $399 and is available today. The 5G Max Outdoor, which is this guy, will be under $500. I don't have the exact price just yet, and it will be available in January. And the super cool all-in-one UDR Dream Router 5G Max will also be under $600 and will be available in February. All three of these devices are unlocked and will work on all three major US carriers. However, Verizon checks notes is uh, support is expected December 29th, so the end of this month, but it's as with all things carriers and certifications that is subject to change, so don't hold them to it. That might not be the thing, but T-Mobile and AT&T are good to go today. And to clarify, because I know I'm going to be asked this in the comments, no, you cannot use this device independently. You must use it in cooperation with a what's called a gateway device, the UDM Pro or the Dream Router or, uh, or one of the smaller ones like the UCG Fiber, uh, for example. You cannot use this just as its own standalone 5G router. It won't do anything. Ubiquity does have other products for that. Those are not 5G yet. In theory, we may see those coming. I don't know anything about that. I haven't seen any of those. I am looking forward to the day that that becomes a reality, but we're not there yet. That being said, all of this seems like a really, really solid device. It's well designed. Um, the Both of these, I mean, the industrial design on the outdoor is really solid. This is going to take a beating and keep on ticking. Keep a licking and keep on ticking. What rhymes with beating? Keep on... I don't know, forget it. <laughs> Moving on, please drop your questions and comments down below. This is a great device and I am going to be using it in production and continuing to test as new updates come out for it as well as the other devices. So I will do my best to answer any of the questions that you put down below. As always, thanks for watching.